Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show, we're talking about TV shows of the supernatural fantasy and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the series finale of The 100. A great series finale, great episode. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. I went into this episode, obviously, knowing it's the series finale, but it just didn't feel like the series finale. I mean, to be fair, I had those feelings before I watched the episode, but that's beside the point. Let's jump into it. Obviously, we're picking up with the whole Murphy and Imori situation, and it's like, like, obviously, you know, Jackson's doing everything he can to keep her alive. Raven's meant to go back and save everyone, but it's this thing of, obviously, you see just, like, Murphy just, you know, hoping that everything turns out okay, obviously giving his blood transfusion because it's like, I'm a night blood too, so, you know... But when the time comes, though, and they have to pull the uh, rebar out of her, it's too much, and she ends up dying. I was like, what? I was like, the final episode, you're giving us the more middle fingers. It's like, it's just been bam, 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 episode after episode after episode. I'm like, Jesus, can we just stop? I mean, God. You have, I was like, come on. And you see how devastated Murphy is? This is almost at the point out. Murphy has never cared about someone as much as he does. And what, and I think, once again, this final season showcases, like, probably out of anyone, Murphy has grown the most over the course of the series. Because he was always, I mean, that was why him and Amori clicked. We're all about, we're survivors. We're all about surviving, never caring about anyone else. It's, but it's like, no, he cares about her. He loves her more than he does any. I mean, to be fair, he, he cares about other people, too. But he's never, like, cared this much about another person. Like, And I also talk about it, too. Like, this is the most heroic Murphy has ever been the entire series. Like, you know, they make the whole point of, like, every so often Murphy will do his heroic thing. It's like, he'll, he'll come through in the end. But this is the most consistently heroic he's ever been. And I just, you know... And I just thought that's just kind of a, a beautiful for this side. Like, for, it's almost like his story, not necessarily coming full circle, but seeing kind of like the the culmination of all his growth, essentially. Him being there with Amori, because obviously it's like, give me the, like, cut out her mind drive. And it's like, no, we already saw what happens with Clark and Josephine. Like, two minds can't occupy. But for Murphy, it's like, I don't care. Like, if you won't do it, I'll do it. And, you know, obviously, like, it's sad because, like, Nate... And, you know, Jackson are with each other. And it's like, no, no, no. I'm not on the front lines. I'm going to be right here because I'm not going to be away from you ever again. So it's like they're reunited while Murphy has to watch the person he loves die. It's like it's, it's super messed up in that regard. But um, very Romeo and Juliet-esque, their story. But it, in, the, in that case of, like, you know, Imori, you know, realizing, like, the situation, she's like, I don't want this for you. Because, but Murphy's like, honestly, I'd give anything just for a few more, like, hours with you over forever without you, you know? And it's like, for, obviously, for Amori, this isn't what she wants because she doesn't want John to basically throw away his life. Obviously, she loves him, but it's just like, because I love you, I don't want you to do this. But for him, it's like, I'm doing this because I love you and I'm, I won't live without you. And I'm like, ah! Oh, it's so heartbreaking and beautiful. And then the music play. I even love um, their whole thing about like, oh, I remember this? This is the first place we met. And she, he's just like, yeah, that, uh, you know, where you had a knife to my throat. And she's like, um, it's like, yeah, the first time I asked you to dance, you stabbed me. And she's like, relationships, right? And it's just, it's, it is beautiful to think how far they've come. And it's just like where they started. And for them to be what I'd consider maybe one if not the power couple of the show you know for a long time coming out like obviously they've had their ups and downs over the course of everything but it's it's you know for them to at least have each other in the end i think that's the beautiful thing about this episode i'm skipping around a little bit but like at the end of the day like everyone kind of had their someone to be with at that time you know uh but obviously raven had rescued everybody and i thought it was beautiful too how her story kind of like has where because lo and behold who's one of the people that's with her nikki nikki's there to help everyone i even love like you know um jordan was going to like you know check on hope where was hope sitting on octavia's throne i was like oh that's that's interesting and it's almost like she quickly got up because she was like oh because i guess she felt a little embarrassed that she was chill or maybe she didn't want him to see that she was worried or whatever and then he was like, yeah, you know, what are friends are for? And she's like, friends, is it what friends do this? And I think it's actually kind of adorable because it's like, honestly, she's never had that relationship with anyone. I mean, not that we're aware of. 
Because I was like, I don't think, I mean, there was always someone around, so it's never, like, I was about to say, not unless it was with, like, Orlando, but I didn't see that coming, or her previous teacher, the one who died for, like, I don't think it was Demi, so I was I think this is her first, because, like, because she's so, like, bashful and, like, hesitant, I was like, oh, that's so interesting. Uh, but obviously, like, Raven showed up, and now it's a whole thing of, like, well, what are we going to do? We need to stop Bill before he ends up taking the test. we got to rescue Maddie. Like, what are we going to do? And Jordan's the one that's concocting a plan and everything. Um, and I love that line of being like, this is one I think my dad will be proud of, you know. So we'll, we'll circle back to that. Uh, let's go, uh, you know, Clark. Uh, dude, badass mode where she's just doing those grenades because it's like, you know, oh, so we're going to, because uh, Levin's like, are we going to do more killing? And it's like, and Octavia's like, that's what we're good at. And it's like, that's that tr uh, statement is so true yet so sad. Clark, come in with the grenades. Boom. Pow, pow, pow. Like a fucking desperado, dude. It's like, Jesus. I mean, because that's the sad thing. They are, they spent so much time fighting and killing like they're super good at, which is super messed up. Clark goes in after Bill, who's taking the test. In the test, the, cre the being takes on the form of Callie because it's like, it takes on the form of the, the person, your teacher, uh, your, your greatest failure or your love. And it's like, in his case, Callie represents all three. I actually think it's actually beautiful when you actually think about it. Like, everyone that was shown is actually the, um, the form the creature takes is literally that for everybody. Because obviously, I wasn't expecting that. So it's like, all right, you know, this is the test. Are you ready to test for all humanity? And it's like, the first question is, basically, you're, you're being creatures kind of, you know, there's a whole thing of love. So why did you basically take away love to get to this point? I was actually curious. I was like, all right, what's Bill's answer going to be? This is going to be interesting. Clark, pow. Not just one headshot. Shot after shot after shot after shot. I was like, Jesus, Clark, that's overkill. And she's like, pencils down. I'm like, dude, that was crazy to me because I was like, I wasn't expecting that. Like, I mean, she, I knew she was there, but I would, for one, I'm actually like, in the grand scheme of things, I am curious what would have happened if Bill was allowed to take the test. We'll never know. That's going to be one of the show's great mysteries of like, what could have been, what would have been. I'd like to think that he'd fail, but, I mean, you, you never know. I mean, because obviously Clark is kind of damned for all the terrible things that she's done. I mean, it's like, he's done terrible things, too, but you can make the argument maybe Clark is the worst of them. But to be fair, it's like, what did Bill do? He radicalized people. Like, not only did he have his cult and everything, like, let's not forget he turned his own son against um, his daughter. Um, he ended up throwing his wife to the wolves because we never actually found out like whatever happened to his wife like whether she was able to meet up with Callie and get you know which even you know that's what well, I might have not talked about it at the time which a very re little reminiscent of like Abby and Clark's relationship to a certain degree, uh, extent but nevertheless um, all the stuff that he's done prepping people for a war like the fact of the matter is it makes him not look that good you know um argument could be like it could be self-indulgence and kind of like ego i guess you could say like that he wasn't always in this for the best reasons that he was doing this maybe your argument could be made that like i, I don't know like i said at the end of the day we will never know and so now it's up to clark to take the test because it's like once the test started you know now it's up to you to take the test and i thought that was so interesting when it was all playing out because obviously it's like all the terrible things that you've done. And for Clark, she's willing to do it anyway. Because it's like, obviously the being is like, because it took on the form of Lexa. And I was like, I would have expect I would have halfway expected to take on the form of Maddie or Abby. But Lexa is also really cool too. Because also it feels good for her to be able to see Lexa. Because, I mean, to be fair, it has been a good couple hundred years. Obviously it doesn't feel like that. It's only been a couple years, but it's still been a long. The last time she saw Lexa was when she was in the City of Light. You know, in season three. So that was the last time she saw Alexa. So it's been a very, very long time. In the grand scheme of things, but even just on a personal level, just, you know, not accounting like them being cryo for like hundreds of years. It was also like it's been years anyway, you know? I just thought that was beautiful for her to have that opportunity to kind of see her one last time. Uh, would Like I said, would have kind of been beautiful either way, whether it had been Abby or Maddie. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, that's what I was talking about. Like the fact of the matter is, even in Clark's case, 
Lexa kind of represents, obviously it's mainly like someone that you love, but also maybe in her mind, it's like my greatest failure because I couldn't save you or protect you. And you are also my greatest teacher because it, you know, just as much as Clark taught Lexa, Lexa, Lexa also taught her, you know, so there's all of that. So, but obviously it's the whole thing about like all that Clark's done, because for her, it's like, you you talk about you know my pain, you don't really know my pain. It's like, oh, the moment you entered it, I felt all your pain. It's like, all right, how about having this situation with my mom being what it is, having lost my, because it's like, why did you kill Bill? He was unarmed and everything, because he killed my child. Is Maddie dead? No, but she will be with her situation, because there's no reversing it. So it's like, basically, you know, justified. For her, it's like, she even said it herself, that was justice. But it's just like, because like, everything that Clark's been through, like, everything she's ever done, and I thought this was an interesting line where she was like, basically, yes, I committed genocide for, you know, and was that for love? Yes, I was like, Jesus, I wouldn't have phrased it like that, but even you, because that's the thing, Clark doesn't deny what she's done. Everything she's done is for everyone else, so the fact of the matter is she would acknowledge it as, yeah, what happened to Mount Weather was massive genocide, you know? And I think that's the beauty of this all coming coming full circle. Because, I, you know, I also was thinking, like, if Clark, from the very beginning of this series, season one Clark took the test, I think it'd be very different. I mean, but that's the whole point. Your, your, your experiences shape you into the person you are. Like, her experiences trying to do whatever she can to protect the people she loves forced her into who she was, made her... She ended up making the choices she made, but it's like, would Clark, you know from season one been able to pass the test, I think. But it's just it's just interesting to think about. But I also think the show also does this interesting thing because obviously it's like the, the moral um, situation of it because it's like you get where Clark's coming from because these are characters we follow the entire time. Clark has been the character we followed since the beginning. So for I mean for her in particular it's like this is a character where she's doing everything for love. This is to protect the people. She has to make those sacrifices. So you as the audience can understand and you're like, I get that protecting the people you love. But there is the other side where they kind of show you. I mean, they've done this, the entire show is demonize Clark's choices because it's just, but I mean, that's any choice. There's always going to be consequences for whatever choice you make, but it always feels like Clark, when she tries to do the right thing, it always seems like she does the wrong thing anyway. But I always think that's interesting. So it's showing you like, you can like, you at least for me personally, I can't speak for everyone. It makes me feel torn because like, I've always looked at Clark's choices as, man, she didn't really have much of a choice. She did what she needed to do. But at the same time, it's like, it doesn't justify what you've done. It doesn't make it any easier of a pill to swallow. But you can understand. Doesn't mean you 100% agree, but you understand, you know, so. But obviously for Clark, these are things that, like, given a chance, she would do it all over again if it meant protecting the people she loves. But obviously the being, it's like, this isn't justice. The fact of the matter is you failed. So it's now like, yep, she failed the test. And even when she came out, she was like, what have I done? Because, you know, I mean, truth be told is you had to be honest. Like you could have sat there and lied, but like that's how you truly felt. I mean, because I mean, because sadly, Clark went into the situation filled with revenge and rage. Maybe she hadn't killed Bill. Like who knows how much, you know, because I always felt like. My two people I've said in the past who were going to end up taking the test were either going to be Clark or Maddie. I think things would have been interesting if it ended up being Maddie. Sadly, she wasn't in a position to do that. But um, obviously, Clark comes out, Raven's waiting, and it's like, wait, we failed the test. It's like, obviously for Clark, it's like, I got to go be with Maddie right now. Because obviously, Levin had the whole conversation with Octavia about like, if you died before Transcendence, you don't get to Transcend. So Bellamy doesn't get to Transcend, even if this does work out. But also Levin's like, yeah, the fact of the matter is if Clark fails, though, you know, either way, whether they survive, whether they transcend or die, it's like, I would have liked to have lived a little bit. And Octavia's like, me too. It's like, we actually think about it in the grand scheme of things. It's like, they've never really had, they've had chances to live, but it's always been, once again, one battle after another. You know, that's always been their lives since they landed. Hell, you can even make argument since they were born on an ark, it's always been a battle, especially in Octavia's case. Because it reigns even true of her because she had to hide under the floor for her entire, her entire life because you're not supposed to have more than one child. And so she had to hide most of her. So she never really fully had a chance to live. You know, like I said, even when they landed on Earth, it was always one battle after another. So, like, there's a little kindredness between her and Levin I thought was kind of pretty dope when you break that down. But, um, 
And I even love Echo being like, I'm sorry. Because he's like, yeah, because obviously, you know, the spy would know. And he's like, I'm, she's like, I'm sorry for what I did to you. I wasn't myself. And Octavia's like, you guys can make up and be friends later. We got to, it's like, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, I'd almost let that slip my mind about what ended up happening. But obviously they ended up learning about what happened to Maddie and everything. And um, Raven ends up being the one that goes into it. And lo and behold, she's on the arc. And lo and behold, who does it take a form of? Abby. It's like, it makes sense. It's like, uh, because this is, you know, because once again, it it plays to that rule of three. Like, this was someone, this was your teacher. This is the work person you probably like. Because obviously at the end, you know, her and Abby kind of had a complicated relationship uh, back in season five. But still, like, much like the Clark situation, that got better. Um, but also at the same time, um, this is someone that you love because, you know, this was someone she thought of like a mother, you know, uh, she was a dear friend, but also like a mother to her. It's like, yeah, she wasn't even your mother by blood, but you cared more about her opinion than you did your own. You would anyone else's. So um, I just thought that was kind of beautiful, her getting an opportunity to see Abby one last time. And I, once again, I brought it up. Like, I thought it was so interesting that she got to see Abby, not Clark. Uh, but nevertheless... It is a situation that, like, because this was also the conversation, too, like, and this, I never really thought about it too much. Why are they the ones that get to dictate the rules? Like, who are you? Because even Clark was like, don't you dare judge me. Like, who are you to judge me? You haven't been through what I've been through, you know, so who are you to judge me, to judge other beings? Because it is kind of effed up for you to be the ones to decide who gets to transcend and become this higher being and then, like, others die. It's like, it is kind of messed up you make that choice for other people. Um, but obviously for, um, Raven, it's like, okay, yes, we're not the best, but we can be better. We can do better. Like, all we just let us live and give us a chance to show you, you know, but then it's like, all right, because obviously we circle back to Jordan's plan and he's like, all right, for my first trick, I'm going to make an army appear. And so he basically kind of used an EMP to basically short out all their weapons and entire army comes through and they're meant to be a distraction but it's like obviously the whole point is um obviously Octavia Levin and um Echo are there to um trying to race back so either way like this could be like the release of Gen 9 so it's like we need to kind of get there before th things kind of happen because it's like one thing goes wrong this whole thing could get set off but obviously like the being is showing her it's like because you see it's like look we're not fighting see this is just meant to be a distraction but then she was like yeah but I know your species you've done it countless times before like you against each other it's like this exact scene has happened over and over and over and over and over and over again over the course of this series. So it's almost this unrelentless cycle. This relentless cycle. I don't know why I said unrelentless. Uh, this relentless cycle that repeats over and over again. The cycle of violence. Uh, but it gets ju uh, jumped off because lo and behold, who's there to instigate stuff? Shade Hayda. And you're like, uh, so Clark's judgments, her actions kind of once again cause, you know things to kind of spiral out again and so he sends off firing shots fire shots start firing on both sides Levin enters to try and stop everybody like this affected matter is Bill was wrong about the test we're being tested right now don't do this Shade Hayda shoots shoot he getting like Levin gets shot in the process Octavia and um, Echo go out there to grab him which even Octavia's like, why'd you do that? And it's like, I already lost Bellamy. I'm not going to lose his sister, too. And I was like, and it's beautiful to see where their relationship is uh, going, uh, considering the whole thing about, like, Hope being like, oh, yeah, you're the one that stabbed my Aunt O, and, you know, she fell off a cliff because of you. Or no, did, or did she kick her off? I can't, I think Octavia fell off. She didn't kick her off, did she? I think Octavia fell off. Regar regardless, it's like, you still stabbed her. Um... But for, you know, the look on Octavia's face, like, whoa, you were making, you're willing to make that sacrifice for me. Because obviously for Echo, it's like, you, you are so, I care deeply about Bellamy and obviously your, his sister, you're kind because like Octavia is like the only other tie she has to Bellamy. So she's not going to let that happen. But it's like, I think it's beautiful in the long run that the person who, you know, because obviously it's like, you know, the being is like, yep, it's done, you know, but then lo and behold, who stepped up to stop 
everything. Octavia, and I think it's beautiful for her story because what was she doing? Like, the, it, it's almost making up for the whole Blood and Raina thing because she talks about the fact that the matter is she's been here before not too long ago. Like, not just battle after battle, but been in a, an exact situation like this. It's like, you do all this, you know, I know you've been taught and everything, a certain thing, but it's like, you guys talk about, you know, you want, um, this is all for men, for all mankind. Who are you fighting right now? Other people. We are all mankind, and if we keep going like this, we will fail. Like Octavia realizes, knows what it's like to be in a war, and know, like you know, because even when they won, they lost because the Earth ended up getting destroyed. Uh, they it was um, uninhabitable for a long time because of everything, because of just their actions, her actions at the time. So for her to kind of, you know, because obviously we're also dealing with an Octavia that not only you know went through everything in season six, she's also the one that was on um, Sky Rain for ten years. So she's grown even more. Uh, the whole situation with her, Dioza, and Hope like that as well, you know. Having lost her brother recently, like all that kind of brought her to this moment right now. And she's asking everyone to put their arms down. I do love that that was after uh, Shade Hater was wiped out. I mean, truth be told, is you can't have him around. It's a good thing that Andrew was able to finally be like, bump that. Ain't no coming back from that. Boom, turn to dust. You know, it's like, yeah. But luckily, you know, Indra lays down her arms and so does everyone else. And it's like, you know, what are we going to do? And the other side finally lays down their arms, too, because it's like, for all mankind. And then Raven was like, see, I told you. Like, humanity is, you know, and I think, once again, the beauty of it, too. What did Monty want but more than anything else? He wanted them to be better, to do better. And I think this is an instance of that. So, obviously, like, they're trying to keep, you know, Echo and Levin alive because if they die, they can't trust in. But then, like, Echo starts glowing. It's like, wait, what? It's going down. And it's like... Bellamy was right. Slowly but surely, everyone's transcending. And even Octavia, and I thought that was so beautiful. Um, but when it was all said and done, like, it was happening. I was like, it's going to be Clark and Maddie too? And it's like, Maddie's fighting it. And Clark is like, it's okay. I know you don't want to leave me alone. But you go, basically, I want you to, I want you to go. You need to go to live your life. And she lets Maddie go. And it's like, I will always love you. I was like, wait a minute. I was like, is Clark... Literally the only one. Is she literally the last human left? I was like, what? I was like, that's cra crazy in the grand scheme of things. I was like, that's going to be interesting. I was like, is that what Clark's story is going to be? At that moment, I was like, that's a depressing ass ending if we're going down that route. I was like, that's super depressing. But the fact of the matter is, obviously, she, you know, she checks Sanctum. Um, she checks... Uh, to see if anyone's there. Then she ends up back. Well, she ran into Picasso. Goes back to Earth. You know, back to the bunker. I was like, is this just... I mean, it makes sense for you to come back to Earth and everything. But then it's like... You know, Picasso runs off. And she's like, don't... Please come back. I don't want to be alone. To see her break down like that. Sad. Because it's like, you are alone in this. I was like, no! I was like, this is so messed up. But then the being appears. And it says like, oh. And she's like, oh. Does, does that mean I get to... You know, because she was wondering if she can transcend now. It's like, no. Which I was like, oh, that's actually messed up. It's almost like you gave her a glimmer of hope. But for her, it's a thing of like, she's like, oh, what? I'm the only one that's ever sinned. It's like, no, but you are the only being in all of existence since the dawn of time that killed someone during the test. It's like, yeah, that probably is a strike against her. But it's like, because everyone has ever, has always done kind of, you know, bad in the in the long run. But it's like, Clark's situation is what it is. But it's like, you know, Maddie knew that, you would say that, that you would do it all over again. Because that's the whole thing. Because even, you know, Raven has said it. Clark, you can't punish Clark for what happened. Clark did what she did. She threw away her own soul, making the choices so none of us would have to do it. Yes, we're not perfect, but we just give us time to be better, you know. But in the long run, it's like, you know, the being is like, you humans are a curious case because transcendence is a choice. And it's like, wait, what? And so the core group, you got Nate, uh, Murphy, and Maury, Raven, Octavia, Levin, uh, Indra, Gaia, Hope, and Jordan all came back 
you know, it's like they can never have offspring, but and when they do die, they can never transcend again, but they don't seem to care. Because for them, it's like, I think for all of them, it's like, Clark went through so much to get us here, we're not going to leave her alone. It's like, yeah, like, everyone else is safe, everyone's happy, they'll never die, they'll never feel pain, like, you know... Because I think it's also beautiful, too, in the, in the case of Maddie, because, like, Maddie never really had a family outside of Clark. Um, her family was gone, and now she's surrounded by so many people. She gets to have that life. Now, what that looks like, it, this, uh, the closer we were getting to the very ending, ending, it was making me think, like, this kind of has a little bit of a Lost vibe to it. Like, spoilers, Lost kind of has a similar ending, if you, you know, to a certain extent. So I kind of expect, I thought that was kind of interesting, but it's like, at the same time, different. But it's like that line of, like, they will never have offspring, which I thought was kind of interesting. I was like, huh. Is it because, like, because they transcended and it came back, so it did something to their reproduction? Because, like, they're not technically, they're, they're mimicking human bodies, but they're not really their human bodies anymore because they technically lost their human bodies the moment they transcended, but now they've been basically forged into beings from clay or something. Like, that's what I'm wondering. Like, are they... But regardless of it all Clark is happy because she has them back it's like yeah at least she knows Maddie's happy yeah it sucks you don't get to be with your daughter but at least Maddie's happy and everything she's safe and then obviously Clark comes over and she's reunited with everybody so I think it's beautiful a part of me was also wondering did Jordan come back mainly because I know like Hope, Hope probably came back because it's like, well, I'm not really all for this. And Auntie O's coming back. I'm coming back. And I think for Jordan, it's probably like, no, like I did what my, my dad would be proud of because like we were, humanity was able to do better. Everyone was able to be better. But it's it's good to see that this core group is together. It's it's still sad at the end of it because like I said, that would have been a depressing ass ending if Clark was the only one. You could make the argument like maybe it's kind of like someone could make the argument is what she deserves. I don't think that but I'm saying the argument could be made but it's still sad in the end because it's like we lost a lot of people Gabriel didn't get to experience this but obviously Gabriel lived for a long time he didn't want eternal life so it can, you know but then Bellamy believed in this so wholeheartedly and he still died you know and it's like Clark's the one and she has to live with that too carrying on the fact that she killed her best friend just all the people they lost that they will never you know get I mean and obviously those there's everyone that transcended, but obviously it's like this core group, this core family, and their friends. Because this is the people Clark fought to protect anyway. So for them to be here, in, to a certain extent, because obviously once again there's exceptions, because there's the whole um, Maddie thing. But I thought in the grand scheme of things, it's like it's this bittersweet, it's beautiful yet sad ending, and it's kind of like like very much like the lost ending being both. I feel like that's at least a little more yay than this but it, it's it's still yay but it's just there is a sadness to it but i did not know what to expect with the show ending like how they were going to end this and here we are um i don't know if there's no like because i think i remember hearing there was going to be a spinoff this is coming from someone who hasn't read into it. i remember reading somewhere a while back that there was going to potentially be a spinoff of like what is that spinoff going to look like because they're not supposed to be able to have offspring right so it's like this is the last of humanity I mean, once again, there's still the big mystery. What the hell is this being? We've never dived into what this thing is and all that. But still, I mean, truth be told is they've kind of got multiple planets to themselves because obviously they still have all those spears. They have the helmets. They could always like come and go to other different planets. But I get the feeling like Earth is their home. They're all, they're all human beings. So like Earth is their home. So I guess they're, you know, it's almost... You know, full circle in that regard, too. Because it's interesting because, like, obviously, the, like, that little overlay, it showed, like, Clark when she was on the arc drawing on the floor. Or, you know, so, so it's, like, it's beautiful in the full sense of thinking about it of, like, yeah, like, you know, when they came to Earth, like, all those years ago. You know, it's, like, to make this their new home and it's, like, it's happening again. Which, interesting enough, not the spoilers, it kind of reminds me of the Magician's ending when you actually think about it, too. That just kind of crossed my mind. Because, like, the Magician's spoilers, sorry, kind of ends in a similar way as well. It's kind of interesting when I thought about it. But it's, like, I don't know, just, I still got all these emotions and feelings of just, like, I'm glad, but like I said, I'm a little sad at the same time. I mean, not only because it's like, well, the show is over, but also like it's kind of a sad ending, yet beautiful at the same time. So it's like, I wonder will they ever cross paths with this being again? Um, I don't know. I mean, what does this hold for other beings that might take the test in the future? What their situations might look like? But I obviously like this core group is, you know, probably just going to live and survive. It's like they are kind of the last of the living humanity, you know? All the rest of humanity folded into the, whatever that being is. So. 
I don't know. It's kind of interesting. Um, it was kind of interesting too. Like we finally understood why like, why Becca was kind of hesitant because like for her it's like she felt like humanity wasn't good enough to take the test, so that's why she chose. She opted out of it because I was like, what did you see? It's like it makes you wonder who did the test take in the, on the form of for her, you know? Uh, but obviously she didn't want to take the test because she didn't want, she was like, humanity's not good enough. I don't think I'm good enough to be the representative of all humanity just because of what she's done in the past. Obviously I think like that was kind of what registered in her brain. So it's like, no one should take this test. It's too high of a price because either, you know, it's like you're taking a chance because she doesn't believe humanity was good enough. But obviously like humanity, yes, is heavily flawed but they have the chance to be, do better, to be better, and they showed it, you know, despite everything, their attempts over and over again, and they ha they got better and better, but also at the same time, like, they still kind of fell into, like I said, that, that cycle of vengeance and hatred and killing and fighting, but it's like, they will, I think it's beautiful, I guess you should think of it really more beautifully as, at the very end of it all, humanity was able to, like, break, they were able to break that cycle, Octavia helped break that cycle who she who was such a key component in that cycle was able to be the one to break it you know so there there's another kind of like more positive um avenue to this whole thing but regardless of it all um i think it was still a great ending regardless and it just it's always that thing of like when you get these endings you're always like but i want to know like i just need that next page i need that next one or two pages. It's like finishing a manga that ends kind of similar in your life. Just give me one or two more pages so I can figure out like where everyone ended up after this. It's just kind of like, but I guess that's the point point of it, just the open endedness of it. Just to, you can only, you can imagine what ended up happening afterwards. But uh, regardless, like I said, I, I'm I'm happy with the ending. I'm curious to see how other people feel about it. Um, with everything that it costs to get here, you know, I'm curious how other people are going to feel about it. But um, yeah. Um, like with all of these situations, you know, um, I thank the cast and crew for all creating such a amazing show. Um, it has been a long and bloody and tearful, uh, road, but, um, it's, it's crazy to see it all come to an end, you know, like always, like everyone involved in this series, you know, I wish them the best of luck in their future endeavors. Thank you for giving us this awesome show, you know, so, um, but, uh, I think that's all I really want to talk about, to the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, little light to the fullest, and enjoy it, good day, and goodbye.